Hello vinyl community. So today I will show you only one album, but it is my favorite album. The reason why I'm talking about it now is because I have just received it in the post um, again and uh, so I wanted to show it to you. I still have a good memory of how I discovered this album. This was shortly after I moved to Munich, to München, in 1989. And not far away from the place where I lived, in the Rosenheimer Straße, there is a record store. Uh, it's actually still there. I was there like two or three months ago and it looked exactly the same. So I went there in 1989 and went through the crates in the sub-department with the music called Independent. And suddenly there was this album in my hands and uh, I turned it around. I mean, it looked interesting enough and there were... There was a whole list of musicians playing on it, mostly with classical instruments, so I thought, yeah, this might be interesting, or horribly corny, but um, somehow I took a chance. Um, I took the album home, which was not far, and I put it on a turntable, I dropped the needle, and um, from the very first moment, when the first minor chord appeared, um, I was quite transfixed. Now since then I have listened to all kind of music and discovered all kind of fascinating stuff and mesmerizing albums but never again um, I had this kind of experience and never again I have encountered music that surpassed this level of quality and inspiration. So um I just got it in the mail and uh, of course I stopped making it too dramatic. I'm talking about uh, Within the Realm of a Dying Sun by Dead Can Dance. This album came out in 1987, so when I discovered it in this record store it was already two years old and uh, it was the third album of Dead Can Dance. Uh, their first EP, not counting, and uh, it is sometimes almost a general opinion that this is their best album. Probably not everyone thinks, as I do, that this is the best piece of music recorded in the second half of the 20th century, but this is what I think about it. It is a flawless album, there is uh, not a single second on it that is a filler. It is full of fascinating ideas and um, it's probably the saddest album ever recorded by far. I mean really by far. But it's it's a sadness that is uh, coupled with an incredible beauty. So this goes hand in hand through the whole album. I'm pretty sure there were times in my life when I was thinking that I just can't have a coherent con conversation with someone who doesn't know this album. But, um, well, I, I must say I bought it maybe 10 to 15 times in my life, on CD for example, because I was giving this out as a gift to people. And of course I was a bit surprised that sometimes certain people just did not like it. I mean, some people just rejected this album by saying, oh, that's just too, too, too sad, too dark. I mean, this is just uh, making me depressed. Yeah, I understand, I understand this uh, statement, but for me this is a fascinating musical expression of a world stripped of any kind of uh, popular culture. And all that remains is a general statement about the human condition. Yeah, big words, I know, but there are probably not many albums that works like that on a, on a deeply emotional level. I would say what... What, uh, what Dark Side of the Moon is for the overground, this is for the underground. And um, yeah, um, I lost my vinyl copy that I bought in 1989 a long time ago and since then I have already bought it on CD a few times and uh, I remember the last years always kind of uh, looking in the usual databases for some edition of this to buy it and I was always a little bit angry about the prices some people were charging for that. So um, this was uh, floating around for like 50, 60, 80 dollars. 
I was always begrudging that a little bit. But early 2016 I found out that 4AD was going to re-release all the Dead Can Dance albums from the 80s and 90s. And they started to do that, so I've just waited my time. And here it is, under 20 euro. That's why 4AD is such a great label. Um, and uh, I haven't I haven't still opened it, it's still in the original cellophane, but I thought let's do a little bit of a product opening video too. I've never done that before. So um, I mean from the outside it looks exactly as I remember it. Um, maybe with the exception of the barcode, I don't know if there was a barcode on it back in the day. Um, so yeah, let's give it a little cut here. Ooh. Yeah, it's open. So I wonder how it looks inside. Um, oh, it's interesting. It's, it's put in a sort of a hard paper. Uh, I remember this list here, but I'm not sure if this was black and white. I think it was white and black maybe, but it could be that my memory doesn't serve right here. Uh, let's have a look at the disc itself very carefully. So here is the label. Also this is an unbelievable example of a timeless album. Um, the music itself, the way it is recorded uh, does not fit in any particular decade or time, in my opinion. So this will always sound fresh to people in 20 years and 50 years. It will be always very contemporary and uh, that is a marvelous achievement. So enough of my rambling. Uh, this was a lot of words about only one album, I know. But um, I wanted to show it to you. My favorite album of all times for, well, almost 30 years now. Imagine that, isn't that crazy? So um, this was Dead Can Dance Within the Realm of a Dying Sun from 1987. Have a nice day and see you next time. Keep it spinning.